Is that it? <sighs> Hi, and welcome to Extronical. In this video, we're going to look at how to use DAX with the Arduino, specifically the MCP4725 R squared C DAC. You can see I've got it wired up here. It wires up just as a normal R squared C device. The rest of this circuit is the audio amplification circuit. I'll go over it all now and explain how it works. Let's just put the actual circuit on screen as well. Okay, so we've got the Arduino, obviously. We've connected a ground wire down to the common ground there. And we've got the positive of the Arduino, the five volts, should I say, connected to the Arduino, going to the VCC connection of the MCP, MCP4725 and a ground connection from the Arduino going to the ground connection of this as well. The SCL connection, which is the yellow wire, goes along to the A5 connection of the Arduino and the SDA connection goes to the A4 connection of the Arduino. That is just standard I squared C hardware bus on the Arduino. Nothing fancy happening there. The rest of the circuitry, I have explained before, I'll put a link up below to a video that goes through that. But very basically, we've got some couple of resistors just hidden away here, a potentiometer. They act as a volume control to control the voltage going to the PAM8403 audio amplifier. And that goes off to a speaker. We have an additional battery pack. The Arduino is not powered by this at the moment. It's powered by the normal USB programming connection here. This is used so that we can actually supply power to the PAM8403 to do the amplification. Rather than using the power from this, you could do, you could plug this five volts connection here. Let's move that wire. This five volt goes down to here, which goes to the battery connection. You could connect that to the Arduino's five volt supply. And that would work for a better be, be an eight ohm speaker. If you're using four ohm, you should definitely probably use a battery pack to supply this. Just because it can give quite initial when you switch on, it can give quite high power, high current requirements, and um, it can be a struggle for the computers USB to supply that current in such short bursts when you first power up, or even when you're playing certain sounds. So I would recommend an external supply for this. And all you do, the ground connection for your uh, external power supply just goes commonly, connects onto the Arduino's ground connection, and the five volts connects directly to this. If you look, I've got one ground jumper lead here because between these two rails, between this rail, row of rails here and this row, there is no connection. I've had to, the ground from the Arduino goes there, I've had to jump across to that one, and therefore, that is common with that Arduino ground connection, and that must happen. But the actual five volts goes around here and up to this, but if you look, no jumper here. So this five volts does not connect into any way on here, and certainly does not connect anywhere onto the Arduino, which it shouldn't. It's explicitly, explicitly, not the right word, exclusively will be the right word. So it is exclusively connected just to this. As I said, you don't need to do this if you don't want to. Particularly if you use an 8 ohm speaker, you should get away with it quite well. I've done loads of 8 ohm speakers without using external supply. And in that case, these 5 volts can just connect to the Arduino's 5 volts. No problems whatsoever. So what does a DAC do? It's the opposite of an ADC. I'm going to keep this very brief because I've covered it on my ESP32 videos as well a lot. Basically, ADC converts an analog value into a digital value that the computer can deal with. So you might convert two volts into a value of 100, for example, and you can do some you can do some maths or whatever it is you need to do on that. A DAC will convert a number in the Arduino to a real life, real life external voltage. So for example, if the voltage range is zero to four volts, now DACs come in usually usually eight bit, ten bit or 12-bit. There are others, but they are some of the most common values you'll come across. For example, this one is a 12-bit DAC. That means it can take a 12-bit number and convert that into a voltage. A 12-bit number is anything from 0 to 4095. Those are the values you can have. So if you pass a value of 0, then you'll get 0 volts out. A 
And if we go on again, working on that zero to four volts range, if you pass a value of 4,095, you should get the four volt, full four volts out. And half of 4,095, which would be 2,047 around that, would be two volts, exactly half. It's that simple. If you had just a eight bit DAC, then you would only have a number between zero and 255. Again, the voltage won't change. If your voltage is zero to 255, is zero to four volts, then zero from this will give zero volts. 255 now being the maximum value you can have would give the four full four volts. And around 127 will give you half that, two volts. You just wouldn't have the position. Each step, each time you go by one, from zero to one to two, you would jump up in bigger chunks of a voltage than you would if it was a 12-bit one going from zero to 4,095. You would have much finer steps. That's what they mean by the resolution. And the output comes out straight on this pin here, which again, as I said, I'm sending it into some volume control circuitry, which I've talked over before, and we won't go into it again. So that's the basis of the DAC. So let's look at what libraries we actually need to make this particular one work. So if we go to sketch and include library, manage libraries, and click in the box and type in MCP4725. And the only option I've got at the moment, and probably you will have as well, is the Adafruit MCP4725 driver. So I've already got it installed, but you then click install there and then click OK or whatever it says there. And that'll be installed. If you go onto the Extronical website, there's a link to this page in the description below. You'll find the page on DAX and Arduino. And if you go down, you'll find the circuit diagram and also all the sample code I'm about to go through. Sine wave, sawtooth, triangle wave, and advanced triangle wave. All are there for you to copy and paste. All I'm going to do is to bring them up on my Arduino IDE and just go through two or three examples from what you'll find on that page. So I'm going to power up the scope and let's crack on from there. Right, first, apologies for any background noise you're hearing. It's just the fan from the oscilloscope. So I've got a couple of extra wires that I've just put in. You might be able to see at the bottom, they're just connected to the oscilloscope. Let's upload one of the examples. We'll start off with the sine wave example. And there we go, we'll just turn the volume up so we can hear it. And we'll alter the scale in a little bit. And you can actually see that it's made from very discrete jumps. And that's because, as I mentioned earlier, the Arduino is not quite as powerful as the ESP32. So we're having to to get the frequency we want out of this, we're having to make bigger jumps in between each one. If I was to reduce the frequency by half, I would get a smoother sine wave, and I'll do that. So I've done that, just uploading, and we should see a change in the waveform. It should be smoother, and a lower frequency, so the sine will be different also. There we go, just change the scaling. You can see that's a much more respectable sine wave. But the frequency is considerably lower. More like a dull hum. Let's put another one on. Let's go for the sawtooth. And we're just uploading that. There we go. And it's almost like a buzz saw, isn't it? <laughs> you can see the type of waveform we've got on the screen. Uh, it's typical sawtooth waveform going along. Okay, last one. And we'll do the advanced sawtooth. I doubt you can hear the noise of the fan from this scope now. I might just turn that volume down a bit because it is rather irritating, to say the least. Okay, we're uploading. 
And this is an example of just how, using a DAC, we can have such fine control over the waveform that's brought out. So, oops, let's go the other way with the scaling. Um, just see if we can improve the trigger a little bit. Let me more steady, a little bit. Okay, so you can see, just from code, we've programmed this to actually go down, up a bit, down again, up to the top, and repeat. That's pure programming code. So we can really manipulate this sound wave, get a lot more complex sounds out than we would just using a PWM and an amplified speaker or whatever. I mean, we can do some great stuff with PWM, but to control the waveform so precisely, if you need that precision, you've got to use a DAC. So in the future, whether I use this DAC, I don't know. My plan is to get some more complex sounds out of the Arduino, particularly to add on to my Space Invaders game. There'll be a link down below to the latest video on that and up above as well. But with this particular DAC, I'm not sure that we are going to be able to do it. It'll be good for low frequency things. You can see the frequency here is 182 hertz with a relatively oh, coarse adjustments to the DAC's voltage. The problem, one of the problems with this particular DAC, it's using R squared C, which is not the fast, fastest protocol. You can, I mean, this one with the Adafruit library is being pushed pretty much as fast as it, it will go. They've altered it as well to try and get the speed up even higher than it was. And it's still not fantastic. Compared to the SP32, when, you know, we had a lot of control, but I mean, the SP32 is umpteen times and for those that aren't British, and I'm not sure whether that's an American word as well, but umpteen times just means a heck of a lot faster than the Arduino. It can hack it. So we're going to have to be really creative with this Arduino and the DAC to get what I want out of it, which I am going to investigate. I've got on order two other DACs. I think it's two other DACs. I'm pretty sure I've got two other DACs on order to come through, which will take between two and four weeks as the, I'm a cheapskate and I'm ordering from China again. But I've got some SPI based DACs which should improve speed. Another thing, if we were to use this and somewhere get the sounds out, it would slow down the processes as well. It's sending those bits over the R2C C bus. It's not really doing even with the hardware R2C. So that's it for now. If you like this video, give it the old, let's get my thumb in the shot, yeah? Thumbs up. If you really liked it, like to see more, please subscribe by clicking that subscribe button below and hitting the bell notification thing that means you actually might get notified of any videos. And of always, if you really want to patronise me, then you know you can always leave a comment down below as well. And if you want to patronise me, click on my Patreon link as well. And that'll be great. That's all for now. Thanks very much for watching.